Smooth Jazz Notes interviewing Patrice Rushkin about the Playboy Jazz Festival. Patrice, have you played the Playboy Jazz Festival before? I have. Um, I think about six times, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I played a couple of times with a group called The Meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, that had a Duke Chancellor and Alfonso Johnson and Ernie Watts and myself. We played it a couple times, and uh, I've appeared there, you know, with uh, different people over the years. You know, uh, you're never on my own, but you know, usually as a uh, part of a special group or as a side person. So this this uh, next outing is going to be with uh, Terry Lynn Carrington, and I think this will be like my sixth or seventh time. <laughs> Um, this is very exciting that you're playing with Terry Lynn Carrington and her Mosaic Project. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, the Mosaic Project features probably some of the most uh, uh, talented and preeminent, you know, young women uh, jazz musicians that are around today. And uh, we, I think Terry, you know, put... Um, the collection of artists and music together um, sort of as a way of celebrating, you know, the fact that there's been this um, consistent presence, but in recent years even more of a presence of women in, in, in jazz and are being, that are being, uh, you know, accepted and, and who play really well and have something to say and are being, uh, uh, I think, given an opportunity to be able to really say it and do their thing. So for us all to be involved in this with her is very special. And uh, certainly uh, for me, it's a thrill because I've known Terry for such a long time since she was probably about 10 or 11 years old. So, so it's really nice to have a chance to participate in a project that really I think is a uh, sort of a bright beacon, you know, for young women who are interested in this music and have needed to be able to see uh, other women participating. And who are some of the other women who are going to be playing with you? Uh, I think quite a few of the people who are on the album are going to come um, and do something. I'm, I'm told that uh, uh, Piana Helen Song is going to be there, and Sheila E. is supposed to do something, and myself, and uh, obviously Terry. And then uh, there's some special guests that are not being announced, so they'll be a surprise, but there'll be women who have appeared on the album. I do know that Ingrid Jensen is going to play some trumpet, and probably uh, uh, Tineke Postma, Postma, who plays saxophone on the album, I think she's coming as well. Um, but in terms of some of the other uh, vocalists who will be there, uh, to my knowledge, it's going to be uh, a great cast, most of whom have been on the album, full of surprises, so should be good. And didn't you grow up in the L.A. area? Yes. I'm from L.A. I'm an L.A. native, uh, South Central Los Angeles. And you went to USC, is that right? I went to USC, and uh, after, after attending uh, Lock High School in South Central, I went to USC after that. And so I've been in Los Angeles, been home, you know, my whole life, but... Uh, I've come and gone to a lot of different places and seen a lot of things, and it always brings me back here, so I, I really love L.A. You play piano and you sing. Do you play any other instruments? Um, I play flute. Uh, I played flute all through junior high school and high school. And I really still enjoy the instrument. I just play for, for my own pleasure now. I don't, I don't really play professionally, but um, I play a little bass, a little bit of guitar, drum. Those are the main ones. In 1972, you won a competition at the Monterey Jazz Festival. Can you tell us about this? Uh, yeah, back in 72, uh, I was just about to get out of high school, and the high school that I went to, Jim Locke High School in Los Angeles, we um, used to enter quite a, bit, a few jazz band competitions, one of which was uh, the one up in Monterey. And... Uh, our band didn't win, but there was another division, a combo division, and I had entered the combo division separate from the, from the band, and the combo won. So the prize, so to speak, is that you get to make an appearance at the festival proper, you know, in front of all of the people.
people who were there to attend the Monterey Jazz Festival, which is always full of wonderful uh, jazz luminaries. And um, from that performance, you know, a lot of attention was focused on uh, the possibilities of, you know, me doing a lot of other things and maybe having a record contract and all of this. That kind of started me. And what other mus what musicians have inspired you in your career? Wow, that's a tough question because I think I've gotten so much inspiration from so many artists. We could be here all day. <laughs> not in naming them, but I would say that I'm usually, you know, very attracted to artists who, within their music, you can hear the the influences of other things. You know, you the depth of what they're about and what their own voice is, but their voice is usually an amalgamation of, of a lot of other musical experiences and otherwise artistic experiences and personal experiences. So um, it's a long list, but it includes people like uh, Quincy Jones and uh, Duke Ellington and Stevie Wonder, and, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, Brahms, Beethoven, <laughs> Miles Davis. Um, James Brown's lifestyle. People like that. So you have had several groundbreaking achievements as a woman in the musical industry. And I'd like to discuss some of these with you, if you don't mind. You were the first women, woman musical director of the Grammy Awards and of the Emmy Awards. Can you Tell us, share some of your experiences. Tell us how this came about. Well, I'm not sure how it all came about because I know that being the first one means that something had to change. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm not sure where that change took place, but the, co the phone rang and I answered it. And they said, do you want to do it? And I said, yeah. So then it just became about doing the, doing the job and doing the task. I don't think when I was called it, you know, to consider consider doing it, that it was at the top of anybody's brain that I was going to be the first woman to do this. I think the job needed to get done, and I apparently had acquired enough of the credentials to make people think that I would be able to uh, do it admir admirably. So, um, you know, and I enjoy the experience very much because of what it represented musically and what it represented organizationally and having an opportunity to, to work with my friends and my peers and, and some of the greatest uh, artists, you know, in, uh, in music and, uh, and in film and TV. After the fact, when it's done, you know, and people look back and then it becomes a thing of like, did you realize that you, this is the first time that this has been done by somebody like you? And, uh, at the time, I wasn't thinking about that at all, just, um, just wanting to do the, the best job that I possibly could and the fact that it was a first hopefully put me in that it wouldn't be another 40 however many years, you know, for the next uh, woman to be considered to, uh, to take on that responsibility and do that job. And we can understand then why you were chose as the first musical director of the People's Choice Awards as well and HBO Comic Relief. Um, we understand you also were the first woman musical director for the NAACP Image Awards, something you've done like a dozen times. Mm -hmm. And and how did that come about and, and that such a prestigious... Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because um, they say success begets success. And I think it, in my case it's been true that, you know, each experience that I had, you never know who's paying attention and who's watching. And the NAACP Image Awards was a show that um, I was asked to do after having done five uh, HBO comedy specials for Robert Townsend. And uh, the producer of the NAACP Image Awards at that time, Hamilton Cloud, had seen all five of Townsend's specials and said, well, would you be interested in, in uh, maybe music directing the show? And uh, Image Awards has been around for a long time, and had been under the helm of, of, of you know, people who, who knew exactly what to do and how to do it, but as everything is, you know, they, they always want to try to 
continue to progress and do things uh, in, a, in a different way on occasion and, and just to see how it goes in order to keep it relevant. And, and uh, so they asked me if I, if I would do it. I said, sure. And uh, they kept asking me over and over and over. And every year our duties became more and more ambitious and uh, played, played for our company to everybody and had such a wonderful uh, time you know, with, with so many artists of so many different, you know, uh, disciplines. It was it was a fantastic experience for me, a lot of fun. This would be enough for anybody's career to be very successful, and yet you have also had another successful career composing music scores for movies and television movies. There's so many we could go on for hours talking about them. Um, maybe we could talk about some of the more um, prominent ones, maybe Men in Black. We'll start with that. Well, Men in Black, the uh, theme to Men in Black was based on the uh, uh, song of mine called Forget Me Not. And uh, they used, uh, Will Smith used Forget Me Not as the basis for uh, a different a new lyric and, and the application for the film. So that was basically uh, uh, what happened with that, you know. And then, of course, the Men in Black as a, as a movie, you know, blew up and, and, and became really well, well, well accepted and world renowned. So I was glad to uh, to be part of it, you know, from that perspective. And are there other movies that were particularly your favorites? I think some of the favorite ones that I've done, actually, in terms of scoring, you know, and really the art of, you know, writing music for films, are, are, are the ones that I did for, a couple that I did for television. Um, there was one in particular called uh, The Ruby Bridges Story, and it was uh, done for Disney. And um, the, uh, it's a true story based upon the little six-year-old, at the time, six-year-old girl during the early, early 60s when uh, segregation was still a big part of everybody's existence, particularly in the South, and this particular little girl integrated the schools of, of uh, Louisiana. So this is a true story, and uh, since it's based upon African American history, it was really quite an experience to be involved in it, and to then meet, you know, a, a grown-up Bridges at the time, and she, you know, Oh, how exciting. It was wonderful. It was a great experience. Are there any others that stand out in your mind? Um, yes. Uh, it's funny because I seem to gravitate towards the films that I've been involved in that have been based upon a true story. Mm. And two, uh, two others come to mind. One is called The Killing Yard, mm -hmm. which is the story of the Attica prison riots. And one particular prisoner who decided to defend himself used uh, as his uh, impetus to defend himself, uh, you know, in, in this court, just the need as a, as, a, as a black man to prove that, you know, you can be in something and yet not of it, you know, you can be in a situation and still not, you know, internalize, you know, what that situation is to your demise. So that was a great and wonderful story. It was, it was actually directed by Susan Palsy, who as another, you know, pioneer as far as female uh, film directors is one of my favorite mm. people and one of my favorite film directors. And then the second one I'd, I'll mention along those lines would be uh, Our America, which was a film that I, uh, I did the score for, and um, it too was based upon a true story. It was directed by uh, Ernest Dickerson. And... Uh, it's based upon the story of two kids from, you know, from the hood who ended up winning the Peabody Award for journalism in reporting about life as they knew it. Well, you're so busy. Do you have a personal life? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so tell us about your personal life. <laughs> well, it's personal. <laughs> well... Are you married? I am. I'm married. And I have two children, four dogs, and a mortgage. And how old are your two 
children. My kids are 13 and 7. My. So we're busy. You are an amazing person. <laughs> My. Um, yes, and you, you live in the L.A. area still, I take it? I still live in, uh, in the L.A. area, and, um, you know, I love the, the, uh, I love the idea of, you know, this still being home. L.A. is very vast, and there's lots of different, you know, uh, exciting things to see and to do, but you're close enough to a lot of different other things. Well, it, in California, you know. It's very diverse as well. It's very diverse. Which is m most fascinating about it. It's really, really nice, and you know, just a few miles to the north or to the south, you can be, you can get into a completely different environment. I mean, California in general is a wonderful, beautiful, um, you know, amazing areas, and uh, uh, you know, Southern California is obviously it's home. But I spent a lot of time in Northern California as well coming up, so I, I really love, I love it out here. Um, we love it out here too, um, <laughs> and and we're from California as well. So, uh, but from Northern California. But yes, California is a great place to be. So, will your family be coming to the Playboy Jazz Festival with you? Uh, I don't know yet. We haven't uh, decided yet what's going to happen in terms of what they're going to do. The kids are just about to be out of school. It is Father's Day weekend, so there's a lot of other things that are that are going on. So we'll try to figure out the best way to spend the most time together. And is your husband in the music industry? He is. He is a uh, tour manager. He's on the oh. other end. So he's uh, he works in concert production and uh, tour management of, of uh, artists that go out and uh, do a lot of concerts. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add to our discussion? <laughs> no, I uh, can't think of much else other than a huge thank you, you know, for years and support, you know, with the people that uh, are within uh, your purview with your interviews and everything. The, the, the interest in what we do as, as artists and what we do as me, with the music is part of what, a big part of what keeps it alive and what keeps the art happening, you know. So everybody get out and support live music, continue to support your artists that you love, and be interested, be aware, demand the best from them, and when they give it to you, uh, applaud and let them know so that we can, uh, we can keep doing what we're doing. Well, thank you for interviewing with us, and we look forward to seeing you on June 17th at the Playboy Jazz Festival. All right, thank you. Well, thank you.